What's happened? Oh, that's all, it doesn't matter. This is a crucial stage of adding the oatmeal to the water without it forming lumps. That is the most important principle of the whole thing. We have to add the oatmeal while stirring furiously with the other hand. This takes 30 seconds only. And you've been making this porridge for how long? Oh, forever. 20 years, 30 years? Oh, more than that, more like 50 years. Just getting close to, bo to boiling over. You'll see when it tries to boil over, it comes zoop up just like that. Right, puts it down to the absolutely lowest. <laughs> Quick stir and leave it for a minute. One minute. I put the minute clock on. One, one, one. So. Did you learn the porridge from your mum? Uh, well, yes, originally. But then I tried all sorts of experiments. Every morning I did a slightly different experiment and eventually discovered, because it's a question of how long it takes, you see, yeah. and eventually decided you cut it down to this minimal amount of time. And that's part of your personality, isn't it, David? Experiments. 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 And Very time. Much. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that there's enough time in the world? No. 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 It's a constant battle, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. The porridge, meanwhile, is doing a bit of getting ready, but in fact, it can get a crust at this stage, and so you have to give it a quick whisk to make sure you haven't got a crust. And so you can feel it, it's stiff. It's stiff there at the bottom, so you have to get that mixed in a bit. There we go. That's all it needs. And then we put the lid on again, uh, and now we leave that for about eight minutes. I also put this on, keep it warm. Now we leave it, let nature do it. Ten minutes or eight minutes. It's now looking like soup, but afterwards it'll look like porridge. So we put it on for ten minutes. You like timers? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I've got a bad memory. <laughs> the thing is, I'm always going off to do something else, right. and so I can quite easily go upstairs for half an hour and forget all about the porridge. This is a ping pong table I adapted. I use it for getting warm in the winter. So I play left handed for five minutes, warms up that half, and then about five minutes the other hand. I call it ping pong squash because these ears, what they do is when the ball would normally disappear off down at the side, they come back again like this. And we got that one back. The idea is to keep the ball going. You don't score. And if it bounces twice, it doesn't matter. If, it, if you volley it, that's not allowed in ping pong, it doesn't matter. Now, if it goes on the floor, no problem, you just do that. Or if it, even if it bounces twice on the floor, you'll still off the radiator. Tell us about the coins. Well, I can predict where the ball's going to come out when I play. So this is meant to make it more random. It very rarely hits the coin. When it does, they come off at a very severe angle, so you probably can't get them anyway. It's one example of models never work to start with. You have to tune them. Right. It would mean you have to use a different form of either very thin coins or else you'd have to use something quite different. Right. Yes, it's, so it's an interesting idea that doesn't work. this event in Wood Green. How did it happen? What was the organisation behind it? Oh yes, well, um, it was actually inspired by a transport group I work for, a voluntary group. So we decided it would be a good idea to, to try and close a street in order to forward the, the progress of the bicycle, if you like, and walking, you know, just the motor cars didn't have to dictate everything. And the first thing we thought of, well, they're not going to let us get in the way of traffic or anything, so it'll have to be a funny little street and a funny little Sunday morning. But eventually we said to ourselves, well, hang on, why don't we start Bing? So we said, well, we'd like you to close Wood Green High Street. And to our surprise, they agreed. <laughs> Then they set up a huge group because closing high street involved rerouting buses, about 10 different bus routes, which is a massive organisation. We met about five times over months while they discussed where they got all the permissions right and had the Department of Transport agreed and so on. The other aspect of that was that um, in the old days the, the streets were for children. They played in the streets and there was no question of don't you go near the street because you'll get killed by a car. It's quite an amazing transformation, isn't it? Uh, when people actually see a street with kids playing, 
and all of them safe is quite a, a nice image, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. changes the world. The next thing was, they were planning all the things that were going to happen, you see, and um, they said, well, what are we going to have in the children's space? And I said, well, you know, normally they have these bouncy castles and things like that. And then I said, well, I've got a, a little water game I could bring. And so at the end of the meeting, they said, well, um, David's had this idea of a water game. So I thought, hang on, my little water game, this closing Green High Street, I've got to do better than that. So uh, I then remade the thing completely, completely. Previously, just went in a little straight line for about 10 metres. Now it goes round corners and all sorts of things, you see, which were completely unheard of before, with couplings at the corners and things. And it was about three times the length, about 30 metres long. That's how it came to be remade, that. The council then went and invited all sorts of people came, people laying on food, you know. Eventually, there was about hundreds of yards of high street were taken up with all the other stuff, you know. 